Good morning, Crossroads Nation. It is about 18 degrees outside on our way to about 45 in the sunny today. So happy spring. <laughs> well, whatever, only in Minnesota, right? My name is Skip Nelson, and I'm a financial advisor with Private Financial and one of the many volunteers that uh, work together to bring you Minnesota Crossroads. We are thrilled to have you here this morning. We've got an incredible program for you. And really just uh, a message of you're not in this alone. Uh, we've all been through job transition and there can be elements of it that are really challenging, right? Um, but you're not in this alone. There's great resources here to help you land a job as quickly as possible. And we've got great information for you this morning and we've got resources beyond this morning uh, that we'll share with you that you can utilize in your job search to land as quickly as possible. Uh, Minnesota Crossroads uh, normally when we're in person operates out of three campuses, but uh, during uh, COVID and when we're going virtual, it is all operated out of the uh, Grace Church um, portion of, of that group. And, uh, and so we all come to you together. Uh, all the groups are together during this period. And we look forward to getting back together as we all do a little bit more normalcy getting back to uh, meeting with other human beings. Weird concept, isn't it? Just to getting together with other people uh, to, to actually talk in the same room. Very bizarre, I know. Uh, but, uh, but it's coming and hopefully sooner rather than later. But in the virtual sense, uh, it's great to have you. And, and uh, the one benefit uh, is you just have to kind of roll out of bed and uh, get on the computer. I don't have to drive anywhere. And, and as a result, also, there's people from not just Minnesota, we have people around the state and, and actually the, the world that, that join us. And uh, uh, later on, I'm gonna ask uh, to see where people are from. It's always fun to see uh, where, uh, where folks are joining us from around the world. So lots of stuff going on uh, today, but great presentation for you. If you haven't heard uh, George Murray, you are in for a treat. Uh, he is an incredible resource author and has got a great message on structure. Uh, for how to navigate your job transition. So you will benefit uh, from it a great deal. Um, but before we get going, I'd like to, to touch on a, a brief message. Uh, I'd like to turn to, to the Bible at uh, Minnesota Crossroads uh, through Grace Church. We uh, are big fans of uh, prayer and uh, the Bible in this uh, process. And so I'd like to just relate a couple of things in that regard, because talk about resources for job transition. Uh, there are many, but uh, golly, there isn't a better one than the Bible. Uh, amazing information. I found it just incredibly helpful in my own job transition, because there's a lot of things that we can't control, right? Uh, alert to that, right? That, that as much as we'd like to, um, we don't have control. We don't have control over whether we keep our job or not. We don't have of how we're treated in our job. We don't have to control a lot of things in life, right? Even though we like to think we are, we're not. And, uh, and so the Bible does provide really great um, support in that regard and, and, and guidance and information. And, uh, and so I, I'd like to, uh, to look at uh, Romans uh, 8, 28 as, as a passage that I found really helpful in my own job transition. And it says, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have called, been called according to his purpose. Um, now, one of the things that I think about uh, in that regard is it, it kind of sounds like a parent, right? Well, it's, it's for your own good, right? Growing up, for me, that was eating my Brussels sprouts or... Uh, or whatever, and, and how many times in life have we been told it's for your own good, but we sure don't see it at the time. I didn't see how eating Brussels sprouts was gonna really help me a lot. Why not give me the cookie, right? As a kid, that's all I could see is what tasted better, but my parents knew better. Uh, they knew beyond that, things that I couldn't really see. And it's really the same thing with God. Um, how nice it would be in life if we grew and learned uh, as much from the good times and when everything goes our way to the times where things don't go our way. And I don't know about you, but I've certainly found in my own life that the times that I've faced challenge, uh, I've grown far more than the times that things just went my way. Um, 
there are the times that things went my way were, were easier and, and certainly enjoyable, but did I grow as a person or learn uh, as much? Uh, I found the, the answer to that question is no, I did not. And uh, I know in my own life, uh, trials have been um, not only hard to see how they're beneficial maybe, uh, but also um, sometimes they just seem wrong or unfair. You know, maybe you worked for a company for a lot of years and put in, you know, just gave it everything you had. And then after 15, 20 years, you get kicked to the curb and it's like, what, what is going on here? That's not fair. How, how, how am I going to benefit from this? just seems like suffering. Um, I know in my own life, I, I uh, think of my, my son, Asher, who at age one, this beautiful, healthy little boy was diagnosed with leukemia. And it's like, how is, how is that fair? How is that, how could anything positive come out of something like that? Um, but it did. Um, Asher is now a healthy five-year-old um, and one of the most giving, thoughtful, caring little boys um, that I've ever met. Uh, and I think a lot of it comes from some of the trials that he had to face as a very, very young boy, um, the things that he had to overcome. Uh, and how many things in your life did you face something like that that you had to overcome that didn't seem fair at the time? But it, looking back, it was actually you, you learned and grew from it. And uh, job transition is certainly that. So it doesn't matter what trials we face. God has a plan. Turn to him and you will frequently grow and be a better person for it, even though in the middle of it, it certainly is hard to see sometimes. Uh, I hope your journey is, is short uh, in job transition and that you do grow and are better for it uh, as an employee, as a person, and uh, that you find looking back that it was a, a, a positive growth experience for you in your life. Uh, that is my prayer, so please uh, join me. Uh, kind Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for the opportunity to learn and grow, even though sometimes it isn't the way we want in our plan or, or uh, go the way we in, uh, have thought, but you do have a plan and you do uh, know what the uh, result will be. And please help us to turn to you and, and lean into you in that that we don't have to. This isn't just on our shoulders. You got this. And uh, we know you have our best interests at heart and uh, help us to see that. And for the, all the, the questions out there of unanswered uh, insecurities, uh, fears, uh, please help every person on this, on this webinar feel you and know that you are there in, in their process. Uh, in your kind and heavenly name, amen. So uh, again, great to have you here uh, this morning. We're going to dive in. Uh, I'm going to share my slides with you, and we're going to go through some of the many resources that uh, are for you through Minnesota Crossroads. There are great. Again, the, the message that I keep coming back to, and it was surprising to me, is that you're not in this alone. And I know in my job transition, I kind of felt like I was sometimes. Uh, nobody's been through this. Nobody, nobody knows what I'm going through. Um, and, uh, but we do, and, uh, and you are not alone. So, uh, for our overall agenda between 7.30 and 7.45-ish, uh, we'll go through some of the information that I'm covering now, uh, between, uh, 7.45 and 7.55, we're going to hear, uh, from Kevin regarding a crossroads in his career and a little testimony for his journey. And then uh, at 7.55-ish uh, to 8.55, uh, we're going to hear from Mr. George Murray. Uh, if you haven't heard him, you're in for a treat. Uh, George is fantastic. Got a great message. Four gears uh, to job transition and take you through each one. A uh, plan that uh, he uh, helped uh, develop through his own job transitions. And I think you will find it incredibly helpful. And then I'll wrap things up after that, and uh, we will be done. So... Uh, as we dive in, as I mentioned earlier, there are three groups uh, when we're meeting in person, uh, the one that uh, through Grace Church in Eden Prairie, but also through Woodbury Lutheran Church and, and North Heights Lutheran Church in Arden Hills. And they are all uh, great partners as, as we try to reach out and, and bring the message to as many people across the Twin Cities as possible. 
And if you uh, would like more information on any of those churches, if you don't have a church home, uh, reach out to them and uh, uh, they would love to welcome you. Again, you're not alone from a job search, but also from a spiritual search. And I found a lot of times uh, my church home to be very encouraging and helpful during job transition. Uh, this is an important uh, element for you to tie into. That is www.mncrossroads.com. If you have not gone on to that site, do it. Write it down. It is a phenomenal resource for you for everything that's going on through Crossroads. And there's a lot of different things that goes on in this organization. So keep an eye on the calendar. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on from networking events, uh, happy hour networking where alumni can come back to give by educational events, uh, social events, lots of stuff. So keep an eye on that site uh, through other resources and jobs uh, and a great resource of alumni that have been through this group that are here uh, to give back. Uh, so make sure you make note of that site. You will find it incredibly helpful. On a weekly basis, there are opportunities for you here at the Minnesota Crossroads. Uh, every Thursday, uh, Networking with Grace uh, kind of kicks in after this event from 9 to 11 every Thursday done by Wes Tang and Wes Roper, uh, one of the best networking groups in the Twin Cities, period. And so if you would like to network with other people and get contacts as far as targeted companies, whatever, don't miss it. You do have to sign up in advance because there's limited space. Uh, and so I don't know, today is probably full, but uh, go on to that, uh, our site and uh, sign up for that event on a, on a weekly basis if you'd like to network. There's also one-on-one -on -one coaching available, uh, and that is anytime. So if you have questions, like somebody to look at your resume or just uh, do some mock interviewing or whatever you want, you, there are one-on-one -on -one coaches that are available for you that have got vast experience in job transition, various career paths. And so uh, don't hesitate to uh, tap into that. And then of course, uh, there is prayer support. There are people praying for you right now. Uh, everybody in this group gets prayed upon. But if you have specific prayer requests as far as an upcoming interview or something that you're worried about or financial challenge or whatever uh, is going through you and your job search, don't hesitate to reach out and people will pray for you. And then we've got online classes, eight, an eight week class of how to get through this job transition process as quickly as possible, how to land as quickly as possible. And it goes through every element of attitude, networking and targeting companies and resumes and negotiating and every element you can imagine. And so sign up for that. There's new classes starting every month and you will enjoy it and found it incredibly helpful. I know I certainly did in my job transition. And so make sure you sign up for that. Uh, also, make sure that you join the LinkedIn group. Uh, again, Minnesota Crossroads Career Network. Uh, there is alumni on that group and they are willing to give back. They are in, uh, there's thousands of alumni on, on companies across the Twin City area that are available for you and can connect you. Uh, chances are, if you've got a targeted company, there's probably an alumni we have from one of them. And so don't hesitate to reach out. And then something we're really excited about is is because uh, people will go to our uh, workshops and think, gosh, that was information. I was taking notes as quick as possible, but I didn't get everything or I, I wasn't able to make it or whatever. Well, now uh, many of our webinars are available on YouTube. So go to the YouTube channel, Minnesota Crossroads Career Network, and you can access uh, this presentation and many of the, the previous presentations to look over and, and see past ones that you might be of interest that you missed or take further notes on ones that you saw. Uh, and we get tons of views on, on those incredibly active. So make sure you turn into that. And really keep in mind that this organization is put together by volunteers. Uh, Harry Urschel is our fearless leader and he has put together an incredible team of people uh, that are all here to support you in your job transition. Uh, we are all here to do that. And so uh, different careers, different uh, backgrounds, uh, but all together with one purpose, and that is supporting you in your job transition. Again, I mentioned the three separate uh, churches that uh, we operate through when we're in person. Here are their websites. If you want more information about those organizations or are looking for a church home, don't hesitate to reach out to them. So let's dive in. And I can get my computer to work here. 
we go. Um, so I'd like to, uh, to start off by introducing to you a gentleman by the name of Kevin Kuntz. And Kevin is going to give us a, a message, a crossroads in my career about his journey and uh, share some uh, wisdom uh, that uh, he learned in his uh, transition journey. So good morning, Kevin, welcome. Good morning, Skip. Thank you for the nice introduction and good morning, everyone. Um, I benefited from Crossroads um, two different times and two different job transitions. The first one I had, um, I was in the banking business and that's been my career, but I was um, in one company for 28 years and I was um, downsized during the recession. And I remember talking to Harry, um, being in his small group. And I thought, you know, this is going to be a snap. I've been on the other side of the desk, the interviewing side. Um, with all this experience, people are going to be standing in line to hire me. Well, more about that later. But that isn't exactly what happened. Uh, the second transition, I called him back and said, you know, how does a five-year um, employment hitch look? Because I'm in a transition again. Um, so anyway, long story short, um, I think, um, as Skip mentioned, there, there are reasons that things happen. I think the Lord allows things to um, people that follow him to happen to strengthen them, to encourage them, maybe to strengthen other people. But um, if I could just share real briefly some of the things that I learned um, and maybe help someone, maybe some of these things would, will help someone get a job a little faster, be on the street, maybe a little less than maybe it would otherwise. But uh, first of all, I learned humility. Um, maybe the only way I was going to learn it was for the Lord to get my attention, to get me out of the workplace because I was too busy doing my job to um, probably um, be considered of any changes that I needed to make. Uh, when I found out when Harry in his very kind way said, you know, talking about touting yourself as a 28 year employee um, may not be what you want to do. And I remember when I started that career, um, longevity was a feather in your cap. It was a sign of dependability, consistent with consistency or loyalty. But at the end of the 28 years when I got out, things had changed and a 28 year career might be uh, viewed as uh, due to complacency or something like that. So um, while I was working, the world changed around me. I wasn't aware of that. And I'm very um, appreciative of Crossroads because um, in a very non-offensive way, I was basically shown that I've got to um, kind of update my game. Second thing I learned, uh, you know, once my ace in the hole was taken away from me, once, you know, people aren't going to be lined up outside my door to hire me, there was some discouragement when reality set. Um, you know, dis discouragement, um, unchecked, is going to lead to depression. Um, I'm not saying I got to that point, but uh, it discouraged me to the point where I know I wasn't putting my best foot forward on certain days, certain times, because... Um, I was allowing my thoughts to uh, take me in a different direction. So I certainly learned um, about some discouragement and you know, a lot of times discouragement stays because I allow it and I learned that too. Uh, finally, patience. Um, you know, when you don't get hired right away, um, there has to be an element of patience. And when everything is coming, going your way and you've got your feet up on the desk and there's no problems, job's going great, there's no need for patience. We only can really grow patience or when we're in, a, when we're in the furnace, when we're in the trial, like Skip mentioned. So um, two verses that were really during this time or two passages that were really important to me. First, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your past. Um, that isn't just, I didn't have to just learn that by memory today. That has been such a mainstay for me that it's just kind of bored in my head. But I think that's what God intends for his word to be planted in our hearts, our minds. And then we have an opportunity to start doing that. But as for that verse, don't lean on your own understanding, Kevin, because a lot of times I did. Um, and acknowledge God, he'll direct your paths. You know, I was in a position before where I thought, well, you know, God helps them that help themselves. So I have to do what I can do. Sometimes we have to sit and wait and let God move and we can't force his hand. So that's something I learned, but also the 
the second passage, which is really important to I me, mean, this is what I want to really emphasize and close with. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ and bringing in every captivity, uh, every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Uh, again, casting down imaginations. I, um, why is it important to go to a good local church that preaches God's word like Skip mentioned? um like grace is you're going to get you're going to be able to hear god's word on a regular basis i remember one message i went to where pastor said casting down imaginations don't allow yourself to be taken up by these things that you think about in your head because a lot of times they're not true things that affect the employment like i'm too old nobody wants me more i've been out such a long time now i'm damaged goods now nobody wants me or my training isn't current i've got no no chance they don't want somebody my age I mean, all these negative talk, all these negative thoughts, we start believing that and you're going to go in an interview and if you happen to be in your 60s like me, it would maybe be easy to maybe show a lack of energy or something. And you know what? God was able to tell me by getting me out and making, forcing me to listen was casting, cast out, and the sermon was with casting down imaginations. Remember the pastor said, that doesn't mean gently setting them down. The um, Greek original word was violently throwing down, getting rid of, throwing it down to smash it. Like, don't deal with these things. Don't play with these thoughts because they're destructive. But um, I just want to encourage everybody, you do have, regardless of your age, you've got a lot of value. Um, but to get rid of that positive think or that negative thinking and replace it with positive, I think it gives you a chance to show that energy that um, what you've learned in your career is something that can really help this company. So anyway, again, I'm very appreciative of uh, Crossroads. They've certainly helped me out and um, I pray for people that are in the situation I've been in. By God's grace, it could be again tomorrow, but uh, we appreciate everything Crossroads has done and wish everyone the best. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Kevin, for your message. And uh, I think all of us in job transition can identify with <laughs> many of the things that you, you've said. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, now, uh, next, our, our keynote speaker, uh, a gentleman that I've gotten to know and uh, somebody I greatly respect uh, in, in this space. Uh, Mr. George Murray has been through it. He's walked the walk, talked the talk. Um, he is the author of a must-read book uh, called Hired, uh, Cut Your Career Search Time in Half. Who would like that? Does that sound appealing to you? <laughs> me, me, me. Um, required reading, as far as I'm concerned, if you're in job transition. Fantastic book. Make sure you pick that up. Uh, and also, uh, George uh, has been so generous, uh, not only giving his time, but he has... Uh, donated a, a $10,000 door prize uh, for some lucky winner here this morning. Uh, how, how above and beyond for George to do that, and somebody's going to win $10,000. Um, uh, April Fools! <laughs> First one to get you. Now you'll be ready for the rest of the day if somebody tries to pull. <laughs> George just about, uh, I think he turned to Ashen White here. Uh, so April Fool's on you too, George. Um, but at any rate, we are so thrilled to have uh, George Murray with us this morning. You are in for a treat. He's got phenomenal information. Get ready to take notes. Uh, and uh, we would just uh, like to welcome uh, uh, Mr. Murray and look forward to the message. Uh, good morning, George. Good morning and thank you. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Skip. Great message, Kevin. Um, I was just wondering if that you were able to get a hold of my wife because she's the one that she's a CFO. So she's the one that knows all the money and everything else. I would have not known it got out of the bank account. So um, again, wel our, welcome to all the grace folks here. Hopefully we can give you uh, a little bit of an edge so that uh, we can make your career transition a little less painful. You know, Kevin probably spoke about it much um, and probably I don't have to really talk about all the, the, the downs because again, career transition itself is a roller coaster ride. And what I have found, and I'm sure you have found as well, is, is that you're probably down on the lower part of the roller coaster more than you're taking, you know, the, 
the the anticipated climb or dive into the next opportunity. So um, we'll uh, I'm going to turn around and uh, share my screen, and uh, I'm going to ask you, Harry, if there's questions, just kind of chime in when we can, because I'm not going to be able to see the chat. Uh, let me see here. Share screen. So can you see the presentation mode, if you can? Uh, yeah, George. All right. So like most, um, I was in my first career transition and I didn't realize it was going to take half as long as it did. Um, three months into the or, uh, in my career transition, I looked in the mirror and I said, wow, I would have thought by now with an unemployment rate of 4.3% in 2016, I would have been having a, a lot of interviews and more importantly, very close to landing my opportunity. But what I really didn't realize was is that there was a process that I needed to learn. And when I started to search around, there was a lot of great books on specific topics, but there wasn't really something that said, from the time that you left your last role to the time that you land your next role, there's a lot of things to consider. Whether you need to do all those or not is something that you have to process and make the right choices along the way. So I'm sure, um, especially right now with uh, a whole different situation, you know, we're in the pandemic, a lot of our face-to-faces -face has become Zoom meetings. And um, the question I actually poised just a couple of days ago is, is that with 10 million people still unemployed and looking for the next opportunity and 14 million jobs available just on LinkedIn, where's the disconnect? It's a process. So we're going to go through. My first question to the group in general is in my career transition, I looked at it a little differently. I looked at it as a transformation, a time to evaluate what I have done so far. And am I still truly on the right track? You know, a lot of times we tend to turn around and just jump into the next thing and the next thing becomes the next thing and it becomes repetitive. Well, we need to take time to evaluate, hey, what are we what have we been doing the last 15, 10, five years? And is it truly something that's inspiring us, what we want to do uh, moving forward? And all George, too many times. Sorry, George, the, the slides are not on the screen. They're not. That's your uh, presentation mode, not the slide mode. Is that better? We're seeing your presentation mode, not the not the slide by itself. Perfect. All right. So again, where were we? We're trying to figure out where we're at currently in our career transition. You know, everything goes along smoothly and then all of something for some, some reason, whether there's a reduction in workforce, whether your particular business has been impacted by COVID, et cetera, et cetera. You now find yourself on the opposite side of the fence, trying to really scratch your head and figure out where you're at. And one of the things that I, realized after I wrote the book was, is that there is no kind of, where's my roadmap? You know, where do I, where am I sitting in my career transition? So ironically enough, in order to turn around, even before you get into this vehicle and start four gears, you have to understand what stage are you at, right? And for me, when I was in that three month window looking in the mirror, I found out that I was still in that lost stage. I wasn't, I hadn't processed what had happened to me. Um, there was a lot of questions still unanswered. 
um, had that same question that Kevin spoke of before. Why me? How am I going to communicate to my family? Am I going to communicate to my family? And to me, I had to figure out um, just kind of like quicksand, how do I get out of this lost stage so I can move forward? And that really takes us to that transformation stage. It's really, and we'll talk about, but how do I really come off as my best self? How do I make sure that I have a structured day? Because even though when you're in career transition, every day feels like a month, before you know it, like myself, three months go by and you're like, wow, I don't even feel that I'm any closer than where I was three months ago. And then once you're able to turn around and achieve all that and get ready, it's really getting you to the confidence stage. And I think Kevin said it best. I mean, I did the same thing. Woke up sometimes not even want to get out of bed. How do I motivate myself? How do I come off as my best self? Um, you know, I just got two thanks but no thanks letters. It's Friday. What do I do over the weekend to really get out of this hole and get back on track? So, you know, for me, career transition, and I think it, everybody should take time. Now, don't take too much time because then it extends your transition, but it's a time out to say, am I still on the right track? You know, is there anything that's changed? For example, have we had kids move out of the home, out through college, that um, what we're trying to cover from a financial standpoint has actually significantly reduced? Maybe I can take a lesser role and, and be quite as happy and add value to an organization? Or do I do a, an entire career pivot? You know, there's people out there that have been in a, in a career for a long period of time, but doing a side thing, and now they've really kind of done and le leapt over and really outlined that path forward. So why four gears? Well, what I found is, is that career transition the first time for me was much like myself learning standard the first time I drove a vehicle. Now, granted, my parents had no patience. So my uncle had, uh, he was bestowed uh, <laughs> the, uh, the great honor to turn around and train me in career or in driving the standard. And his ideal back in the eighties, and I'm gonna date myself was, I'm gonna port, park the car on a hill and tell you and instruct you because you've already been through kind of the the man or the automa automation of a vehicle, but you don't know the standard, it's pretty simple. You just need to turn around and ease off the gas or ease off the clutch and give it a little gas and you'll go forward. Well, that did not happen. Start, I installed the car. Um, I basically rolled back, almost hit a vehicle. Uh, so it didn't work out for me and it was hard to get into that first gear. So a lot like career transition the first time for me, how do I figure out all this and how do I really start to take off? First thing, as I said, know yourself. What I have found with talking with so many people in the last couple of years, if COVID has done anything, it's really self-reflection and evaluate. What I've been doing, even people who are working are doing this right now. They're really evaluating. Is this really what I wanna do for the next 10 years, the next five years, next 20 years? So this is an opportunity to take time and outline where you've been, what resources, what skills that you have, and more importantly, what's the roadmap moving forward for you? And again, you know, when I was in career transition in 2016, the first time I had to come up with the story, right? You know, the whole story, why did you leave? And I was painfully killing myself because I had not processed what happened. So it was coming across when people said, tell me about yourself, George. You know, that, that whole response was seven to 10 minutes. And you can imagine that I wasn't coming off on my best self, whether I was networking with folks or potentially interviewing for a role. So it's really a good time for you to develop a story that's quick and concise, positive, and move forward as to what you're looking for. I always tell people a good rule of thumb is if you're if you're going beyond a couple of minutes, uh, it's probably not quick enough and not positive enough. And then really prepare for transition because none of us are, especially the first time, right? For me, 
here I was, unemployment rate, as we said, 4.3%. Hey, I'm going to get out there. I'm going to get a job, maybe four months. Well, that four months took me 13 a roll, right? So uh, on average, and this is pre-COVID, uh, is a lot of the transition groups were saying it's any it's anybody who's in professional level to an executive level is taking seven and a half to 13.5 months, right? So it's important for us to really prepare for that, both mentally, like Kevin said earlier, physically. I mean, because I looked in my mirror and I said, you know what? I need to change some things. And then really your finances. Um, Skip is the expert in this. A lot of times, and we were talking just before uh, we came on board here uh, this morning, is, is that it's kind of like going to the dentist. You got to go but no one really wants to look forward to it. And I did the same thing. I waited too long in my first career transition to really evaluate because again, I thought it was gonna take me a couple of months. Well, if I had done and made the changes later in my first career transition, I probably would have been a lot better financially prepared, not only for this career transition, but the one that was going to follow. So I tell people, make sure you do this as soon as possible, as pain, as painful as it might feel, for me it wasn't. And as I met, I actually turned it into kind of a game. Like for example, renegotiating your your um, uh, your internet and your uh, your TV shows, whatever. If you haven't done that in a couple of years, and you should be doing that on a calendar basis, is that you got an opportunity to reduce your costs and maybe potentially get more channels. Uh, so I always I looked at that too late. And then before you get out of uh, your first gear, it's really a time before you even get out there, you start networking, it's to take time to scrub your social media. Make sure that, um, I always say, make sure that you're always presenting your best self. Um, you're always talking about positive things. And I always kind of relate it to, it's something that your grandmother would not be shocked to read on a Sunday morning newspaper. Too many times I've seen um, professionals go to final rounds and because of something that they posted on one of their social media sites had really gotten them kicked out of the running. So I always tell people, you know, make sure that, uh, for example, your LinkedIn profile, you want to make sure that those are open uh, for everybody to see, your picture to see, um, your banner and everything else. But also you want to make sure some of the things that you want, want to be less exposed, like Facebook, because if it's a family, make sure that those filters are on um, so that people don't see that, hey, you know what, George goes out and parties every Saturday night. I'm not sure whether or not we want him a part of our group. So, so we're out of first gear. We got it in after all the grinding and all the stalling and everything. We're going to start to build momentum and try to shift. And so what I have found is, is that career transition is all on you whether you've been in an executive role or a managerial role for the last five or six years, what I have found is, is that a lot of times people coming out of the gate want to delegate this. This is your career. This is your life. It's important for you to understand you cannot delegate this. This is going to be probably the hardest job you've had in, a le in the last five or 10 years. Just be prepared for it. Develop you know, a, a scheduled day that we'll talk about. Um, but you need to make sure you also are, real, are willing to do the heavy lifting, you know, the, the, the running of the marathon, so to speak. It is a marathon and it's not a sprint. And if you're preparing for a sprint, you're going to run out of gas real quick. So you need to make sure that you're doing those things that are going to keep you with high energy, enthusiasm, and positive attitude. So one of the first things is, is out of networking, there's two things that you're gonna be asked. Interviewing, networking is tell me about yourself and the ask, how can I help, right? Because I think all the people that I've networked with, the human nature is that we want to help. It's really important for us to understand what your clear ask is. But before we do that, we have to understand who are you? What makes you different? You know, there's people like Kathleen Crandall that does the best thing as far as branding, you know, branding your best self. And she tells it probably the best. What makes you unique and different? Why do people come to you, right? And one of the ladies that I was working with in January, and 
one of the workshops, we were developing what, you know, my consideration is value proposition. Um, elevator pitches are so 2006. Uh, and I kind of joke on that because of the fact that it's all about what you've done. And if you're talking to somebody that you first met, you're forcing the listener to figure out, well, how does that resonate with me? As opposed to doing homework the night before on somebody and really developing a value proposition. It's because we're living in a very attention deficit society, we need to make sure that we make an immediate impact on what we do and who we are. So this lady came to me, she was a, a transitioning nurse. And um, I said, hey, you know, what makes you unique and different? And you've got to tell me within less than 30 seconds, because if you don't know, there was just a, an article about two years ago, they said that the studies have found because of technology like this, the phone, our attention span is less than five seconds. And do you know that the goldfish has six seconds? So we have less than attention span of a goldfish. So it's important for us that we're not going into that elevator pitch that's one to three minutes, it's 30 seconds. So after talking with her and working with her, she came up with this. And to me, her first one was, I, I'm, a, I'm a, a pediatrician uh, nurse dealing with babies, blah, blah, blah. And after that, she says, I catch babies. How exciting is that? That's somebody I wanna know a little bit more about that generates the buzz, it generates the uh, impact that you have in, in the world. And more importantly, it draws people in to ask for more. To me, a value proposition is kind of the taste of the cake, it's not the recipe. So we're moving along in second gear. It's all about brand, and I talked about this before. There's two classes um, that I always suggest there's a lot of resources that both Harry and Skip talked about with Grace, but really understanding. When I first came in career transition, you know, people were like, well, what is your brand? I said, well, isn't that like a company or a product? I didn't realize in 2016 how much branding of individuals are going to be so important, but it is. And it really shows up well before you meet somebody. It's how you communicate. It's how you come across. Uh, it's how you, you know, communicate through email and so forth, how you post and so forth. So it's important for you to really, if you haven't got one yet, grab one fast and develop it over time and perfect it. And then the other thing is even before you get to networking and interviewing, you got to be prepared. So part of my process was always the night before, and I have about 40 of these books when I was in my first career transition. It was actually the baseline for me writing my book because I was able to go back to the notes. But my process was, is I'm gonna meet with Skip. His name's up in top left. I always talk about, put down notes, who introduced us that can generate a conversation, especially if you're nervous, you're anxious, you may be a like of an introvert as I was in 2016. Um, what's this networking all about? But I would go and find out, well, how many con common connections that we have? maybe have two or three that I know pretty well, that can generate a conversation. Because in that networking meeting, you, you get an introduction, but you're trying to establish a real good connection in the shortest amount of time. And what you're trying to do is develop cheerleaders in the workforce. So that, for example, if you're a project manager and you're looking for a project manager role, people out there, when they hear of an opportunity, the first person they come up with is you your name, hey, you should go talk to Fred. He's a project manager, I just talked to him a couple of weeks ago, and he's looking for this particular opportunity. And all that's done in preparation, even before you get to the plate. And again, it's really wrapping your brand, your preparation, and preparing for the market. The market might be of one who you're networking with, but it's also making sure that if you're gonna do a lot more Zoom calls, you make sure that your aesthetics behind you are not a distraction. It's organized. I can tell you that um, several things, for example, making sure that your computer is lit at least eye level. You're not looking down or looking up. You don't have uh, things in the background that date you. I always love to use the reference. One of the gentlemen that I networked with about six months ago had the same, same curtains that my grandmother had. 
And so I said, ah, you might want to change those. So I always tell people, this is probably a good time to do print screen, take a look, just to make sure that you can better prepare yourself for the next one-on-one, -on -one, face to face meeting via Zoom or Teams or your interview. And then one of the things that always I, I get asked, George, you're always on the social media sites. Um, and I use all tools like Skip and Harry said, there's so many tools out there. There's so many people that's part of networking is asking some of the best practices. And what I have found is, is that Buffer is a great application that's able to, you can go to buffer.com or download the app on your phone. And for 30 minutes a day, it's between normally when I get home six to 6.30 before I get out and run, is, is that I will pull information, do Google alerts, so forth, maybe from Harvard Business Review on topics, maybe my brand. I'll copy and paste those. And Buffer pulls all your social media together. And then you can copy, paste, put some comments, and then schedule the next day when you want that information to go out to that particular network site, whether it's LinkedIn, your Instagram, your Facebook account, what have you. So a wonderful tool, time management, especially in career transition, because as I said before, a lot of time can go by and a lot of little effort. So it's always a process. And this is one of the applications that I particularly love. And then I tell people, you know, especially when we get longer in our career transition, we get frustrated. I know that Kevin talked about it earlier where, you know, there's just sometimes, am I ever gonna get, am I ever gonna land, right? Do, do they really want my services and my, my skills? That's always question, but make sure it doesn't force you to change who you are, right? Still be true to yourself. I always uh, tell people, be yourself because everyone is taken. Um, and this means that if you get to a certain point and, you know, you feel desperate, um, don't sound desperate, don't come across desperate, don't try to go down, you know, and, and I'll reference, you know, if you're, you've been a senior manager, you're going to go down to a supervisor because that's not going to help you. And it's certainly not going to help the, business, the company that potentially will interview you because there'll be questions when you do that interviewing process. So always be yourself. So questions yet before we move on? Not seeing anything, but certainly encourage people to chime in. All right. So we're, we're picking up momentum, getting into third gear. I think a lot of momentum comes into this point where we actually start networking and we start interviewing with people. The thing I tell people is, is that a lot of this can be overwhelming. So it's really important to be controlling the things that you have control of, right? Especially if you've been out four to six months, it becomes, well, when am I gonna get hired? Those are the things, you know, you, you can always hope for the best, pray for the best, but you know, it might not happen today. It might happen a week from today. It may happen for a month and it's just through effort. But what I found is, is that you gotta make sure that you look in the mirror and control the things you can. When I was in my first career transition at that three month mark, I looked at it and said, you know what? I'm not the healthiest I've ever been. All the things that I committed myself when I was working, I hadn't done, slept better, ate better, start a workout program. Now, was I gonna get out of the, out, off the couch and start running? No, I would have had a heart attack. I was the heaviest I'd ever been, right? And I just started walking. Do you know that the average person right now works or walks less than 5,700 steps a day. That's less than three miles. So if you got up in the morning, part of your scheduled day and got up and walked three miles before 9 a.m., what's the old army term? We do more by 9 a.m. than most people do all day. You've already accomplished that. You'll get out there. What I have found is, is that getting out there walking, you know, you don't have to walk, you can swim, you could row. Um, Find something that really helps you because that is going to help you more confidence. I lost 40 pounds in my first career transition, um, had a lot more energy. Um, you know, I was starting to look better, at least personally, and that, that comes in with confidence. So really important for you to make sure you try to focus on those. And I know it's tough. 
The next thing I tell people is always show up. There's one person out there um, that I met in my first career transition. If it said, um, this is the definition of showing up best, um, it was a gentleman by the name of Mark Steen. Mark um, was always professional, wore a suit and tie. He was out for well over 13 or 14 months, always positive, always giving. Um, and he, he landed too. And he showed me that that's who you truly want to be. You want to be your best self all the time because you just don't know that one networking meeting might be either A, your potential boss or the connection to your potential boss. So always show up best. And that's also, as we talked about earlier, in the virtual world, making sure that your background is inviting. You don't have an 80s twisted sister poster canted uh, like we used to do back in the 80s. Again, I date myself, but uh, I don't really care about who knows my age. Um, it's all a mind thing. Um, but it also gives you the opportunity for people's uh, perceptions to be lessened as far as being skeptical. Right. I, I know that when I was in my first career transition, the first couple of months, I took Fridays a little too casual um, and I showed up in some jeans and, and a polo shirt. And looking back, I said, wow, I probably hurt my chances with not only getting introduced to the best candidates, but even potentially even being introduced to anybody. Right. So, again, always show up your best self. Positive attitude, energy. It's always important. And it really talks about who you are through adversity, right? Because we're all going to have challenging times, difficult times, um, more so than not, or we might think that we have more than others. Uh, we just don't know each person's day. But what is important for us is to maintain that energy, enthusiasm, part, positive attitude. And part of my day, and I, I wrote about it in the book, is as I got up and YouTube, I mean, when we're in career transition, you know, we're, we're always watching our pennies more so than when we were working. And so what I found was YouTube was probably the best career coach because it was free. It was always there. All I had to do was go down into the office and log in. If I want to meditate for energy today, if I want a, a morning affirmations to get me out of a rut, I just turn around and type a couple of words, do a search a video and there's the instructor right there right readily available so find ways for you each and every day to kick off your day it's really important because it's going to carry you through the rest of the day and speaking of day you know as i said before a lot of times we got up at a certain time uh, we did certain things before work we went into work we had metrics we had meetings all that's gone it's swiped away from us and what I have found is a lot of 10 people sit in front of the computer and they'll sit six hours and submit resumes with the hopes that the automated tracking system will miraculously pick them out of 300 resumes. It's going to happen through networking. You're really going to turn around and find your opportunity. And more times than not, it's going to be three to five people deep, meaning Skip introduced me to Harry, Harry introduced me to Kevin, and Kevin introduced me to my future boss. So it's important for you to structure that morning, get up, eat a great breakfast, uh, don't, you know, pancakes and syrup, probably not a good one every day, because then it'll be like me having the gut. Um, but it's really important for you to set that day in motion and then carry it through by setting up days for cold calls, um, setting emails, introductions through LinkedIn, setting up meetings, all that is probably the majority of your day. And at the end of the day, you got to clean it up and you got to set it up for the next day. That's why I said really early, this is, this is heavy lifting. This is a lot of work. And I respect everybody that goes through career transition because I've been through it twice. I know the challenges. Oh, so. And then finally, one of the things that, you know, mine was all about time management in my career transition, you know, being a process oriented operations guy, trying to figure all this out. Um, I started to develop templates on the weekends, you know, how do, how do I introduce myself, you know, blindly into LinkedIn, you don't just click connect, because then it's really hard for that person to figure out, well, why are we connecting? 
Have we met somewhere before? Is there a common interest? So I always tell people that, hey, make sure that you have a great message because you only have 300 characters to give a first impression through LinkedIn. But then also make sure that when people actually do accept your connection, that you have a 24 to 36 hour window to respond and say, thank you. Is there an opportunity for us to get better acquainted, whether it's through Zoom or once we got all our vaccinations, we're back to somewhat of a normal lifestyle, we can get back face to face with a coffee or so forth. But it's important for us to do that diligence and that follow up. Meaningful in introductions um, from, your, from your network that the people that you've met, either through churches or through other operations of um, networking, or you know maybe it's high school alumni. How are we doing on time? So double clutch, what is double clutch? So for those, and I'm gonna date myself again, my favorite car is 1969 Trans Am. First year it came out, I can tell you everything ins and outs of the car. And what you realize is that the cars of today have this auto synchronization, so they don't understand what this is. So like career transition, we build momentum, right? And sometimes we're coming up the hill and the engine's outpacing the tires, and then we're coming over the hill where the tires start to outpace the engine. Same thing in career transition, right? We start to net, we start to interview, we back off on our networking. I always tell people, every couple of, you know, two to three weeks, you should evaluate what's going on. That's part of double clutch. So really to sync the tires and the engine together to maintain and still carry you forward momentum. Part of that is what I consider the stop, start, continue model. I'm gonna evaluate the last couple of weeks. I'm gonna look and say, you know, these are the things that are not really bearing fruit. I'm gonna stop doing those things, right? And maybe I'll turn around and continue these three things because I'm really building momentum or I'm getting really close to the ideal company, the ideal position, I'm gonna continue. But then the last 15 minutes of that 45 minute uh, brainstorming session with myself, is, is that I'm gonna turn around and say, hey, you know what, what's one thing that I'm gonna start doing this week? Like, hey, I'm gonna reach out to 10 CEOs each week for the next five weeks. That might be a challenge, it's a goal, it's a KPI. All those things that we didn't have anymore out of a career, we've gotta start putting it in our daily schedule. Then the other thing is, is in order for you to build and continue with momentum, it's how do I keep you know, that momentum going? All these people I've all already networked with, maybe it's been five or seven weeks ago, their lives are, are packed jam. They're networking with people. You know, they don't want to necessarily forget you, but time happens, right? So it's important for you to do a lot of things to keep top of mind. And one of the things that I found was to turn around and send an email out every five to seven weeks, just a brief one to every person that you've networked with, individually and say, listen, you know what, here's a couple of things that I've been doing since the last time we talked. And then a couple of lines that says, this is what we're, I'm continually looking for. That not only kept me relevant in my networking group, but it also was an able, ability to continue to build the pipeline of networking. Because some people were like, oh, George, yeah, I, it's been about five, seven weeks. I just met Sally. Sally probably needs to talk to you. You guys have really great things in common. She might know of an opportunity. Bang. It's an opportunity, again, to reach out and really reignite the already existing network you have. I always tell people it's not a book. It's not, you know, a whole script. It's literally just, you know, probably four or 500 words, really short and sweet. Um, try things like cold calling CEOs. I actually did that on a dare. And ironically enough, I found that 85% response rate. So the things do work. A lot of the old techniques still work and are relevant. The fact is, is that very few people use them. That's another way to be unique and another way to be top of mind. One of the things that I was really, really um, interested in getting um, connected with was one of the CEOs in the Minneapolis area. And they were going through some challenging times. And as you can imagine, the CEO is extremely busy. 
but I just felt that I had an opportunity to have a connection and a discussion. So after a couple of you know reach outs, cold calls, I went down to corporate and I basically just said, here, I understand that you have some problems. I went to Walmart, I bought a emergency vehicle. You know, I think I paid, spent like seven bucks or whatever, put a little note in there and said, I just wanna be a part of the team to help you be successful, boom. And that's all, that's what it was finally took. It took the third round for me to get connected. The person called me, said persistence, love it, really different way to turn around and approach. And again, it's being unique and different. And that's what you wanna do. And another thing I tell people, being a military guy, is don't be afraid to try something new, right? Like I said, cold calling for me was definitely not in my wheelhouse. I was not a sales guy, but a, a great networking gentleman that I met early on in my first networking told me that said, the sooner you realize that you're a salesperson and you're selling you and your brand, the better off you will be. So try lots of things, do cold calls, write letters to people that recently promoted in the Star Tribune section on Monday. Do all those things because one of those things will land for you. And what will land for you might not land for that person, but you gotta at least try them, right? So that's one of the things I found is, is that the more things that you're willing to try and the more things that you're consistent on that are working for you, the more you're gonna be And I would say, even though this is the fourth gear, it's extremely important to identify a personal board of advisors. And to me, I've been touting that you, if you haven't realized by now, at least in my first career transition, I had an old boss and mentor that actually asked me, he said, George, who do you work for? And my response was, well, I used to work for, he said, no. He goes, who do you work for? I said, well, I work for God and my family. He goes, well, that's a good, good answer. He goes, but no, you're not getting where I'm, it took me three times. I said, well, I work for myself. Exactly. You are the CEO of you incorporated. The sooner you realize it, the better off you're able to build your brand, your value, and your next opportunity. And like a CEO of any corporation, you need a personal board of advisors. These are people that are all are different. They're not all like, for example, me, an operations person, because they're not going to be like, oh, yep, you're right, George, you're right, George, because you're never going to get better, right? So it's important for you to have a cross-functional of three to five people that have your best interests at heart. They're going to be willing to give some time to you. They're also going to be willing to hold you accountable. And that's a difficult thing for us, accountability, especially in career transition, right? Because there's so much free time. So it's important for you to have those. Did you reach out to 10 people today? Did you have you know, networking meetings at least for three to four people this, today and tomorrow and the next day? And how does your calendar look? These people will do it. And they'll also be there when things aren't going so well for you. You know, they'll pick you up. They'll be readily available to give you five minutes to get you from here to here. And that's what you need. And that's a personal board of advisors. So I highly recommend if you don't have one now, do it and carry that through your entire life because they are valuable. All these people I met in career transition and believe me, I really valued career transition because I met so many great people. I would have never got the opportunity to meet. So reach out, find your, your, your personal board of advisors and utilize them and support them and help them too. Again, another opportunity is network with as many master networkers that are out there because they, A, can help you, guide you, give you advice, and also introduce you to people that maybe next week you're a little light. You can say, hey, Harry, Skip, you're a master networker. Can you introduce me to two or three people in this industry, in this particular company? And then when you finally get to interviewing processes, you need to make sure that you create a wow at every step. And I say is early, as early as the phone screen, you need to sit and show up in your best self. And what I mean by that is dress up. Yeah, dress up, 
get your suit and tie, get your business sports coat um, or your power suit or whatever is going to work for you. Because what I have found was doing those represent actually related to me in the military days. When I put on my dress blues or my dress greens, I always stood about an inch or a half too taller and I spoke with more confidence and it will come across in that phone screen. That is the first step of creating a wow is showing up in your best self, being on your game, doing your homework on that particular company. And if you know the person that you're interviewing with, do a little bit of LinkedIn search so that you can have a meaningful dialogue and truly connect. Then you get to the second round. You really need to take that information that you've learned and also through that face-to-face -face interview and create that value proposition towards their three to five challenges in the first year. And then finally, when you get to the final round, and I've seen this a lot and heard this a lot, people are not getting across the threshold because they're not bringing it all the way across. And what I mean by that is developing a 90-day plan, saying based upon all we've talked about in the phone screen, in the first face-to-face, -face, the second face-to-face, -face, and the final interview, here's how I'd approach my first 90 days. Now, this is not solid by any means, but it's telling them that you took time to listen. Again, we're an intention, listen, listening deficit disorder society. So listening, taking notes, reverting it back into a 90 day plan tells them that you've listened, you're engaged, and you've already thought about working the first 90 days in the organization. And then you can tell them, hey, you know what? This is by no means the final. After my first week, we can sit down a line so that I can make sure my 90 days and beyond are the most successful and meet your expectations. And I can tell you my last two positions in two different industries I'd never had any experience in. I beat people who had that experience based upon how I showed up and introduced myself in that value proposition and providing a 90 day plan. And then when you finally cross the finish line, I tell people, be kind, be helpful, pay it forward, because this may not be your own first career transition or, or your only career transition. And it's important for you to use these skills like, as I said before, the updates that you've done every five to seven weeks. You might wanna do that at least twice a year to your network group that says, listen, here's my, you know, the first six months of 2021, here's how it's progressing. Here's what I'm looking for. You might be looking for an additional board seat. You might be looking for a painter to paint your, paint your house. I need somebody that's really good, really good cost or whatever. Lean on your network. They've got the experience and the skill, right? It's a give and take. It's, you know, uh, there's uh, great people out there, master networkers, by the way, um, that uh, Ann Pryor and Lenny Newman say it best. There's two people or two forms of people. There's takers and users, givers and sharers. And what I have found is the more you give, the more you get. So give and share often and help others, and you will be more successful than you ever have in career transition and beyond. And that's the four gears. So if you haven't wrote all the notes down, taken all the advice, three things that you should evaluate every couple of months if you are progressing through and still in career transition. It's really, you have to check your energy, enthusiasm, positive attitude. What do I need to adjust? Evaluate your day in the life. You may need to make changes to that. And you may, as the CEO of you incorporated, may have to hire and fire your personal board of advisors because they're not progressing you in the market. questions thanks george do have a few uh that came up is uh, how did you get ceos to call you back well again it's really the message so uh it took me about three hours to develop a very short and concise message that was less than 30 seconds so one of the first ceos i reached out to was doug baker of echo Labs. so in 2016 he's running a multi-billion dollar organization and he pulled i think 37 million dollars in comp that year. So I was like, well, probably the chances of him returning my call were slim. He was actually the first person to respond. And my message to him was, Doug, 
This is George Murray, a recently transitioning executive where I've taken a company from 100 to 180 million in 18 months. I'm looking to network in the medium to large business community. Would love your advice. Click 26 seconds. And he called me two days later. So again, if you're talking to those people, you know that they're looking for the taste of the cake, not the entire recipe. So don't go on five or six minutes on a message because he even said himself, never had an ops guy call me and sell me himself, different. And the message left me wanting to figure out how you did it, right? So. That's great. I mean, one notable thing about your message was you didn't ask them for a job. You didn't say, I'd love to work at Ecolab and look for your help. You were looking for his advice and that will always get a better response. Um, someone else asks, is it okay to email your entire networking group at once in the blind copy field of your email? I, I think it's it's based upon not your entire group. I, I would say you would do it in clumps of people that you know pretty well. Like for example, private equity firms uh, was one of the areas that I was looking in. Um, I had a different message for those folks. Maybe for people that I was more, more familiar with and confident with, like for example, my personal board of advisors, um, I'd always blind copy them, but I'd always give a more detailed message, you know, that says, hey, you know, uh, I lost 10 pounds this week because I got a little bit more aggressive on running or whatever the case may be, right? But it's it's really to you. I would say more times than not, it, a lot of times, especially now, it might be just best to give them a five minute call and say, hey, you know what, Bill, Bill Connor, as a matter of fact, Phil um, and I have a Saturday morning and hopefully we'll see you guys this Saturday. He's one that I reach out on a, on a consistent basis. Hey, Phil, how's it going? How can I help you? Again, it's always how can I help you first? Um, giving and, you know, you'll, you'll get it back. So, but Saturdays meetings are first and third Saturdays a month. And the intent of the meeting is really to help people. We take an excerpt. We try to bring kind of people in their best swim lane uh, in a brief, like we were in a coffee shop, just to say, hey, and this topic this week, this Saturday is dealing with impact of rejection. And I know that I am one of those people have been out there many times. So hope we'll see people. Terrific. A couple of people asking to see your contact information again on the previous page, um, but also saying they're, someone's asking, they're having trouble setting up 15 minute networking meetings with people. What other advice can you offer there? Um, I would say, you know, because right now a lot of I mean, you probably read a lot of articles with people being zoomed out, right? Um, although phone calls um, have been frowned upon before, I think a lot more people are open to that because it's like you can just get on a call and just say, hey, can I have a brief five minute? To, I, I always tell people seven minutes. Mine's always a little bit different. Seven minutes. Can I have seven minutes of your time? And I make sure I'm on seven minutes. And I've got my value proposition. And I say, how can I help you? And I'm doing my homework on the night before that person. If that person's in career transition, I'm, I try to show up with four or five names when I'm talking to them so that I can give them. It's always, what can I give them? What can I help them with? And then over time, hopefully it gets reciprocated. Terrific. Uh, no other questions at the moment. If anybody else has anything to ask, type it into the chat box. George, thanks so much for all the information. Let's give another minute here to see if anybody uh, adds anything. And then and those people who are interested in getting the book, you know, um, they can get it on Kirk House Publishing, 15% off this week. Again, it's um, it's Easter. It will be Easter. So hopefully everybody gets a gift and lands. Uh, but you just got to go in to check out and uh, use hired 15% off. They get 15% off. I do encourage everybody to uh, pick that up. There's a lot of great information in there. Someone asking, is the deck being shared? The video of this webinar will be available on YouTube. I'll have it up before the end of the day. And it'll be linked on the uh, seminars page of the mncrossroads.com website as well. Uh, I'm not seeing any other questions come up at the moment. Oh, let me turn it back over to Skip. Thank you, Harry, and thank you, George. Wow, I uh, hope you took some notes. Uh, a lot of great information. Uh, as Harry mentioned again, the uh, recording of this, will, it will be available at the bottom of the seminar page. If you just go into Minnesota Crossroads, uh, you will find it. 
and uh, along with other all the other resources. And again, it's all about resources. George is a phenomenal one. Make sure you pick up the book. Uh, great resource. And, and a lot of the resources that uh, I mentioned before, again, you're not in this alone. There's a lot of help for you. Uh, I'm really excited about a resource that's coming up uh, that is being done by my team at uh, Thriving called the Focus Forward Financial Group is we're gonna do a series, a financial series, uh, specifically for uh, Crossroads on, on kind of the challenges and some of the financial elements of job transition and uh, taking a deep dive into that to help you on uh, your job transition from a financial standpoint. So look for that uh, coming up. But other resources that we talked about to keep in mind, remember the eight week class here at uh, Minnesota Crossroads through Grace um, that they're starting every month. So sign up for that. It's a great uh, way to learn how to get landed as quickly as possible. Uh, the networking group, uh, networking with Grace every Thursday between 9 and 11, be starting here shortly. Uh, you have to sign up because it's limited as far as the number of people that are allowed in. One-on-one -on -one coaching available. Uh, anytime you can reach out to get together with a coach, ask specific questions that you've got to help be helpful in your job uh, transition. Uh, prayer support. There are people praying for you. If you have specific prayer requests, let us know. We'll certainly pray on that. And uh, the next uh, workshop uh, webinar is going to be Thursday evening, Thursday evening, April 8th, between 7 and 8.30 p.m. Kevin Knabel uh, is going to be speaking on the KLT uh, no like trust factor in your job transition. Kevin is the most recommended business speaker in the world. And uh, we're fortunate enough to have him on the 8th. So mark that on your calendar. Um, and uh, gosh, hope you got something uh, today from uh, uh, the different resources that are available. Again, thanks to uh, our speakers, uh, George and, uh, and uh, Kevin. And hopefully we'll see you again at another event very soon. Uh, other than that, uh, have a blessed Easter and make it a great day.